Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this video we're going to study the area of parallelograms. And there's a nice little trick to it, and I'm going to show it to you now. Here's a parallelogram, and I'm going to cut off from it this little piece, this triangle namely, and move it over here, like this. And when the triangle moves over there, we're going to get the rectangle. From here, 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 and here. It's a rectangle, okay? The same I can do here. I can cut off this triangle and move it over there. After that, I will have a rectangle, okay? Here, 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 and here. So, the area of a parallelogram is the same as the area of its corresponding rectangle. After you cut the piece and move it there, you will always get a rectangle. Let's try find the area of this parallelogram here in the grid using that idea. I'll cut off this piece, okay, this triangle here, and move it over there. So my rectangle goes from here to here, here and here. It is two units here, and then one, two, three, four units that way. Four times two, eight. Its area is eight square units. Over here, number two. Here's a little triangle that I will cut off and move over there. And then I will get the rectangle three units this way and one unit that way. So it is three square units. And lastly over here, again the same thing happens. I'm going to cut off this triangle, move it over here. And I have a rectangle, three units high, two units this way. Total area is total six. Square units, there are four. That's pretty easy, isn't it? Now, in most school books, in all school books, we are given the area of a parallelogram with this formula. A equals B times H. B is the base, H is the altitude or height. And I have marked them in this figure. B is the base, this side here, like the, your bottom side, so to speak. Height is the altitude. Height is always perpendicular to the base, okay, and it is, it is from base to the opposite side. You can also see that here I have this triangle that I would cut off and move. This triangle gets cut off and moved. And if you think of the resulting rectangle, the rectangle has sides B this way and H this way, right? So the area of that corresponding rectangle is calculated with this base times height, b times h, okay? So that's why for the parallelogram we use the same idea. We just call this h the altitude, okay? Our task here is to find the area of these parallelograms. And to do that we need to find the base and the altitude. Base is easy, in this case it's this side, so I'll just measure how many centimeters it is. It's 30, pretty close. 30 centimeters, and now the height, I need to actually draw the height there first, before I can measure it. I need to draw the height, and it has to be perpendicular, so I'm going to use my protractor to make sure I get the perpendicular line. I'm going to line up this 90 degree mark with the base, and this midpoint here, and then I'm going to draw here a line that is perpendicular, like that. And now measure how long it is. 8 centimeters. Okay, now that I have my base and my altitude, it's easy. I just multiply those and get that the area is 240 square centimeters. In this parallelogram, it's a little bit more complicated maybe because it looks like it's tilted on its side. Where is the base there for? Which side is the base? You can choose any side to be the base, you know? I'll choose this side to be the base and just measure how long it is. Okay, 21 centimeters. And now the same thing, I need to draw the altitude, okay? And for that I'll continue the base. So I will be able to line up this and this, the 90 degree mark. Notice that I can draw the altitude anywhere within the parallelogram. It won't matter where I draw it as long as it is perpendicular, because it's going to be 
equally long. When I measure it, I'll get the same number whether I measure this one or this one, you know, as long as it is the perpendicular line there. So now I measure how long it is. It's a little over, but I don't want to deal with decimals right now, so let's just call it 15 centimeters. Now we just multiply 21 times 15, okay? 5 times 1, and then 5 times 2, 1, 2. Area of this one is 315 square centimeters. Lastly, draw a parallelogram here with an area of 150 square centimeters. If the area has to be this, then I know that my base times altitude has to be 150. It doesn't say anything about the base or altitude, so I can choose my numbers. I'll just choose two numbers, the base and the altitude, so that the product is 150. For example, I could put 10 and 15, right? 10 centimeters times 15 centimeters will work great. This should be 10 centimeters, 15 centimeters, sorry. So I will draw a base that is 10 centimeters, or maybe I'll draw the base to be 15, and then I'll draw an altitude 10 then worry about the other sides of the parallelogram. Okay, there's 15 centimeters. And then I will draw the altitude 10 centimeters up. It has to be a perpendicular line, so actually I need to continue this to be able to use my protractor. There, this is now 10 centimeters. The other opposite side to base will be somewhere here, okay? It needs to be 15 centimeters and go somewhere here. Anywhere, actually, I can now choose how slanted my parallelogram will be. I could put the 15 centimeters just like here, or here, or here, or here, 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 here. All of those parallelograms will have the height of 20, 10 centimeters, okay? Again, this side has to be perpendicular to the height. So, in order to draw it more accurately, I need to continue this line here. These last two sides are now easy to draw in, once I got this exactly 15. Once I get this 15, this 15, then these two sides I just draw in. So there's one possibility, but there's multitudes more different parallelograms that have the area of 150 square centimeters, okay? And I apologize for messing up the drawing some. I hope this was still helpful.